Clerk, please call the roll. Karen, you're on mute. Mrs. Capolini Here. Mr. Fry? Here. Mr. Hainum? Here. Mr. McCann? Here. Mr. Richardson? Here. Ms. Stowe? Here. Mrs. Westfall? Here. Well, all seven members of City Council are present for this virtual meeting via Zoom. Uh, Bill Sanford is in council chambers. Bill, do you have any guests or friends there? We have no one here, Mr. Mayor. I guess the word got around that you're not that hospitable. <laughs> yeah. After what we read on the opinion pages of the Blade. Um, Thank you. you can let us know if anybody joins you, though. We'll, we'll do. I'll keep my eye on the door. Okay. Um, with that, let's do our Pledge of Allegiance this meeting, led by Lindsay Stow. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And item three is additions to the agenda. I do want to add as the final agenda item, whatever it turns out to be numerically as an executive session for an update on litigation. Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was looking to uh, try to schedule a uh, Finance Committee meeting uh, for the review of the debt policy. It's been a few years since we've done that. So uh, I wanted to try to schedule a Finance Committee meeting towards the end of the month. So uh, we could put that on the agenda. I'd appreciate Let's it. Make that 13A. And you say debt policy. Okay. Other members of City Council, any agenda item additions? Hearing none, members of staff, Mr. Sanford. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schroyer. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Nice, you got your camera. We can actually see you tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chief Snore. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Okay, you're in council chambers as well. Sometimes. Mr. Haller. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. And Mrs. Brining. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Okay, with that, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Then moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and the agenda is approved as amended for this evening. Agenda item four is approval of the meeting minutes from January 4th. Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, um, move the approval of the minutes for the council meeting for January 4th, 2021 as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the January 4th, 2021 meeting minutes as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and those meeting minutes are approved. Agenda item five, I have on here a COVID-19 update. Um, first off, the city did have an employee hospitalized last week for COVID. He has since been released. Apparently he had complications. He did have COVID, but he also had some pneumonia complications. However, he's doing quite well and is expected back on the job probably next week. Um, there's been a lot of controversy uh, in the vaccination schedule. Their um, chief, we could, we probably all saw on the news that 30 Oregon police officers or so got their vaccinations and I don't want to see those go to waste, but it also rubbed me the wrong way when the reporter said, or no, it was the the doc at St. Vincent said, well, if they couldn't come, we were going to call Mommy or Holland or Ottawa Hills. 
Um, we apparently think Sylvania is too large. Any updates on your vaccination potential? Uh, we really haven't, uh, other than what the county had planned, the county has um, implemented a plan for supplemental um, vaccines. Uh, they're supposed to be basically a daily on call. To my knowledge, that has not started yet. I'm not really sure how that played out with the Toledo Clinic vaccinations, but uh, we, as, as you mentioned, we were not notified and um, we're not mentioned. So I'm not really sure what the connection was there. Um, that being a clinic in Toledo and reaching out to Oregon, but in, in, any, in any regard, uh, um, we are uh, on, on participating with the county list and uh, you know, our officers have been notified to be on call if we are notified. Vaccine procedures were discussed during the mayor's Zoom call this afternoon, and um, the health commissioner talked quite a bit about that and did um, say that they're trying to closely follow the governor's uh, priorities. However, there have been a few notable people, one of them in Sylvania, that clearly is not um, priority 1A or 1B that was on Facebook today saying, look, I got my vaccine, you should all get it too. And I'm quite concerned that if they continue to show favoritism, the system will break down. At the same time, I don't want them to waste it. And maybe he just happened to be at St. B's at the right time. I don't know. But I, I'm concerned about that. Um, there is a slowdown on the vaccine um, one of them, they've changed the manufacturing system so they can produce more and it's, it's slowing down as well. The 80 and over lists were filled in Lucas County, um, but they expect more spots to open up. And we do have three official vaccination locations in Sylvania, the two Kroger stores and Flower Hospital. Um, that map probably is available on the health department website. There's 28 of them in total around the county. Um, and there will be more as more vaccine becomes available. One item I wanted to talk to you about is it became apparent to me that the Board of Education is meeting in person when Shannon Sypersky resigned and it was on the news. They were all sitting together at one table on the stage at Southview when she dropped her keys on the table and said she was through. Um, I also know that the Washington Board of Education is meeting in person. Neither are allowing the public to attend, but they are meeting together. I had Leslie call around to other municipalities. Mommy and Oregon are meeting totally virtually, as is Sylvania Township. However, Perrysburg, which is on the other side of the river and in Wood County, is meeting live as normal. I've discussed with Mr. Aller um, what our possibilities are, and I think we're safer and smarter staying the way that we are, but this, I made the decision unilaterally back in December that we shouldn't be meeting in person. At that time, we had at least two and sometimes three members coming into hybrid meetings. And if we were able to do that, keep the mayor and city council maybe a few people short and we keep staff mostly out of the room, we could meet in a hybrid situation. It's not my recommendation, but I don't want to keep you from that consideration. You don't need to tell me tonight. You can communicate through the president of council if you want or to me directly. But my recommendation, particularly with the um, new COVID that's beginning to circulate that may be more contagious, we're probably better off the way we are, but other groups are meeting in person. And I will listen to what you wanna say, what you wanna do. Mr. Mayor, I, I would, you know, I'm, I'm most interested in the public being uh, able to uh, participate 
uh, you know, I, I think the, I've obviously been doing these virtually for quite some time. I've, I think, uh, I think it's worked. Your wise. Well, I think it's worked well for me. Um, and the key would be making sure that we have opportunities for the public to be heard um, whenever they, you know, when they choose to. And I think we've done a good job of um, promoting that. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with the present arrangement. But I'll obviously defer to, uh, you know, to the rest of you and whatever, whatever you choose. I, as long as this is an option, I would prefer to just continue to do this. In response, Mr. Hainum, we are noticing a lot of people around the community are watching on the YouTube channel. We've gotten some comments about that. Um, Mr. McCann, you might want to know one of the comments we got is, why does he always have his camera turned off? <laughs> they wouldn't have known that if they weren't watching. Um, and that's your option, whether you want to have it on or not. But we are knowing that people can do it. I don't know whether Chuck can tell us how many people are watching tonight. You can tell by looking at the YouTube feed how many people are on it. We had no requests tonight to be part of our Zoom meeting. We have two viewers right now, Mr. Mayor. Just two. Well, we had a lot more last, last meeting, as you can imagine. I've actually heard from a lot of people that are enjoying watching. I almost feel like we're getting more watchers on Zoom than we were when we were just in person. It's far but more. Maybe because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's also easier. You don't have to get yourself dressed and drive and sit there and you can go into the kitchen if you want for a little while. It's, it's, a, it's a better deal. And there's nothing to say that we can't continue to do that once we're meeting live again. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Anyone else want to make a comment about the live yeah. versus virtual? Mr. Mayor, you make a good point, And that is, I don't think we can ever go back to not um, doing our meetings on, at least on Facebook Live. I mean, I think when we do go go back, I think making that available to the community is probably a good idea. We'll yeah. have to have Chuck make a recommendation to us whether we use the YouTube channel or go to Facebook Live. Um, but people are apparently satisfied with being able to watch city council chambers on the one camera, but they can see all of us better because they can see this screen during a Zoom meeting. Yeah, I would agree with Mr. Hayden, Mr. Mayor, that that this is this is something that's accelerating the the, the COVID uh, pandemic has accelerated what what we were already planning on probably looking at anyway. So going backwards to me is not really an option in regards to allowing the public to see what they what they are interested in seeing. Okay. Well, hopefully it won't be an issue and we'll be able to go back live by early summer and address that issue. All right, um, let's move on to agenda item six, which is the bridge rehabilitation project. Mr. Aller. Sorry about that, forgot to unmute. Um, yes, uh, this is, um, the uh, removal of the top three inches of the deck that's on the bridge that uh, goes over 10 mile creek uh, it'll be a high pressure basically a, a very very high pressure uh, uh, water stream that'll blast that three inches off and then uh, we'll replace it <clears throat> with uh, a new surface uh, there will be some additional rehab work done uh, on some things once we get that top layer torn off but uh, that's the the main part of the project during that phase um, of the bridge deck uh, Monroe Street will be closed for two weeks um, we're looking to do this project <clears throat> in uh, June start uh, uh, right at the first of June and uh, then uh, Monroe Street will be closed for two weeks and then we'll move uh, once the bridge deck is done uh, 
traffic will be opened up so that there's one lane in each direction while we do all of the work on the sides of the bridges. Uh, new parapet walls, railings, sidewalks, that type of work. So, um, and that'll be for an additional five weeks. So this is about a seven week project. Um, the estimated construction cost is $188,311. Uh, the project was included in our 2021 capital improvement plan, and uh, we would uh, request that uh, the clerk be authorized to advertise for bids. Kevin, we had been talking about this project combined with the waterline open cut across Monroe Street in May. Are you delaying that project to the 1st of June as well? Uh, it's it, it all that we're, we're hoping that we can get started the last week of May, but the last week of May this year is... Um, is the school's not out until the middle of that week and we're we wanted to wait until after the school's uh school is out so that we're not messing with their busing plans and everything so it's probably going to be a, a june one start for both projects for both projects yes and the bridge contractor is going to have limited access during the open cut portion of it probably that's correct all right yeah those two contractors will have to work together um Provo Construction is doing the water main work for SOMO. Um, they're aware of our project. We have uh, lots of coordination statements in the bid documents for the for the bridge project to make sure that those two contractors work together. So we also have a, another thing that we have to work through during this bridge construction is there's a uh, frontier uh, conduit duct bank that basically goes right through the sidewalk area on the north side of Monroe Street. So we have to work with Frontier to make sure that that is, isn't damaged during the construction. It, it's a, what should be a fairly simple project is a pretty difficult project, so. Kevin? Yes. Once you do this uh, work with uh, the replacement of that three inches, what's the life expectancy at that point of, of the repairs? Uh, it's the, Stated life expectancy is 25 years, um, but there's actually been projects. This, this process has been in, in place long enough that there's projects that are at uh, 35 and 40. So, okay. Yeah. Well, then I have a quick question. I feel like I've asked this before and I should know the answer. So sorry for the repetition here. But um, when is the LPGA this year and will this be impacted? Will it be impacted by this? No. Um, the Bill may need to help me. I, I think the LPJ is, ske is scheduled for the first part of August in 21. I'm pretty sure it's uh, July. Yeah, it's July 5th through the 11th. Yeah. There's going to be some overlap then. Yeah, we'll be at the one in the one lane stage at that at that at that point. We could be if if things go well, we could be wrapped up but that's going to be pushing it we'll be at one lane in each direction during that all right um, mr aller is requesting an authorization for the clerk to advertise to bid the construction phase of the project mrs westfall thank you mr mayor uh, i do have one more quick question if you wouldn't mind from mr aller uh, Mr. Aller, is it appropriate uh, and acceptable to let the uh, person who gets the bid know about the timing and at least see if there's any options for uh, working with that timeline? Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll definitely uh, talk to them, knowing that that's coming up, um, and uh, see if we, we can do a short-term open or something like or that. Or something. So, okay, yeah. thank you. With that, I move that council uh, authorize the clerk of council to advertise for bids for the Monroe Street Bridge rehabilitation. Second. Been moved and seconded to authorize the clerk to advertise. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to agenda item seven, Brent Road Waterline. Mr. Aller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this uh, project was uh, previously approved as far as the construction is concerned with Ordinance 89-2020, um, and the uh, project is complete. We have the final uh, project costs 
came in at uh, $35,790 for construction. And then with inspection, testing, and things of that nature, the total cost was $39,296.25. We, because each parcel will get equal benefit, um, we just did a unit cost recovery versus a front footage. And so each parcel uh, will pay $7,859.25 when they pull the tap for, or the uh, service application for the tap. Um, that amount will go up. Uh, we use, uh, typically when we don't finance, actually finance a project, we use the existing Ohio Water Development Authority bond rate. Uh, that bond rate is, is uh, currently 1.78%. So uh, that amount uh, will go up 1.7% uh, each year for 20 years, and then it maxes out at, at that amount. Um, I would anticipate, I know that the property owner is actively uh, trying to market those parcels, and I would anticipate them going fairly quickly. So. Um, we do it, uh, just ask for approval of the cost recovery roster so that we can recoup those construction costs. Any questions for Mr. Aller? Mr. McCann. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce by title only ordinance number 8 2021, establishing the 6302 dash 6342 Brent Road waterline and the cost recovery free fee for the area authorizing the director of public service to adjust the cost recovery fee <clears throat> to reflect actual construction costs. I move passage of ordinance number 8-2021 as an emergency measure. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded for passage of ordinance number eight, 2021 as an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and ordinance number eight, 2021 is enacted as an emergency measure. Moving on to agenda item eight, the Eldon Ditch Hydraulic Study, Mr. Aller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In September, during the Utilities and Environment Committee, uh, we explained the issues that have been taking place uh, in the Eldon Ditch area, both in the lower end of the uh, ditch as well as the northern end of the ditch. And uh, dates back to 1965 that there's been issues with that. Um, we had we mentioned at that time that we'd like to do a study of uh, that ditch and determine what the best means are to alleviate the, the uh, flooding that occurs on the northern end of that system and the long time that it takes for that water to, to drain out of the, that area. Um, we did receive a, uh, a proposal from Fishbeck uh, engineers. At that time, they were Northwest consultants. Uh, they, they've since been purchased by Fishbeck. Um, in the amount of $28,970 to perform that study. Um, and uh, we would recommend they've done other storm work for us and are kind of the firm that we go to uh, for any of our storm issues. And uh, we'd recommend moving forward with them uh, with this study. Uh, the study was included in the capital improvement plan, um, but it will be paid out of the 503, which is the stormwater assessment fund versus the capital improvement fund. All right, we do have an ordinance uh, to accept the proposal of Fishback to perform this survey. Mr. McCann. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce by title only Ordinance number 9-2021, accepting the proposal of Fishback to conduct professional engineering and survey services for the Eldon Ditch Hydraulic Study, appropriating funds therefore in the amount of 28,970. I move for passage of Ordinance 9-2021 as an emergency measure. Second. Second. It is, an, 
It has been moved and seconded for passage of ordinance number nine, 2021 as an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and ordinance number nine, 2021 is enacted as an emergency measure. Going to agenda item nine, police vehicles purchase. Mr. Aller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, police division has uh, researched uh, um, a new vehicle and a used vehicle uh, for their purposes. Um, the, we are proposing to replace an existing 2006 Ford F-150 pickup. Uh, it has approximately 85,000 miles on it, um, but uh, a lot of corrosion. Um, and uh, we, we're proposing to replace that with a 2021 Dodge Ram 1500 quad cab uh, that we would purchase from the Yark Automotive Group. That vehicle is being pur purchased through the uh, state cooperative purchase program and uh, has gone through the proper measures uh, for approval. Uh, the used vehicle is a 2019 Chevrolet Traverse. That one will be purchased from Dave White Chevrolet right here in town. Um, and the purchase price of that one is $30,275. Uh, this vehicle on a day-to-day -day basis will be used by the police captains as a, as a uh, vehicle uh, around to, you know, to the work that they do in town as well as to uh, area meetings. But it's also used for a lot of out-of-town uh, training things where we uh, use the, uh, take the volunteers or explorers. And uh, we would, you know, typically, uh, at, at some time, some of those trainings, we would use all three seats um, and uh, transport. Now, obviously today that wouldn't be uh, doable, but hopefully we'll be back to uh, where we can all ride together at some point before too long. So that vehicle will be replacing a 2007 uh, Ford Explorer that's got 102,000 miles on it and uh, also has seen some better days, expects, especially on the uh, underside. Uh, of it. So once both of those vehicles are in, we'll actually be disposing of an additional vehicle, a 2009 Ford Crown Victoria that's got 112,000 miles on it. And with all of the changes that we've made in the fleet um, through this year, last year and this year, uh, it'll take our fleet from uh, 25 vehicles to 23 vehicles. So we, we are looking to, to reduce those uh, you know those large equipment items uh, when possible, and uh, this this affords us the opportunity. So, we look for approval of the uh, purchases of a new 2021 Dodge Ram from Yark Automotive Group, and a 2019 Chevrolet Traverse from Dave White Chevrolet. Kevin, the, um, question on regards to the Traverse. If I was looking and remember correctly. That vehicle has about 35,000 miles on it? Yes, it does. How much, how much more would a new one be of a similarly outfitted? Do we have a sense of that? Um, probably those new are upwards pretty close to 50. Okay. That's right. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to ask the question because... You know, some people might say, well, "Wait a second, you're spending thirty thousand bucks on a on a vehicle that's got thirty five thousand miles on it." So that's why I wanted to ask the question on the record. Yeah, the the, the miles are were a little higher. We we looked. We we uh, the the chief and I, uh, you know, made an effort to look at a, at a used vehicle vehicle. So again, like the the previous meeting, we're able to keep that sale in in town uh, with Dave White, and uh, it's a little bit higher on on the miles, but. Um, uh, a lot of highway, my, as you can imagine, 2019 with the, with that many miles, a lot of highway miles and a lot of, you know, long drives. So uh, we felt comfortable with it. How did you confirm the price for that, Kevin or Chief? Because you didn't use the Ohio program, did you do a blue book comparison or how did you just yes. confirm? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I did. Yeah, I did a blue book comparison. Mm -hmm. All right. Always good to keep money in town. I appreciate buying it in town, very much so. Okay, we do have two ordinances to do this, one for each vehicle. Um, first one is Ordinance 10 to purchase the used 
Chevy Traverse, Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to introduce and read by title only ordinance number 10-2021, authorizing the mayor and director of finance to accept the proposal of Dave White Chevrolet for the purchase of one 2019 Chevrolet Traverse for the Sylvania City Police Department. And I move passage of ordinance number 10-2021 as an emergency measure. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for passage of ordinance number 10. 2021 is an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and ordinance number 10, 2021 is approved as an emergency measure. Now ordinance 11 to purchase the new vehicle, Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to introduce and read by title only ordinance number 11-2021. Authorizing the mayor and director of finance to accept the proposal of Yark Automotive Group for the purchase of one 2021 Dodge Ram 1500 quad cab pickup truck for the Sylvania Police Department. And I would like to move passage of ordinance number 11-2021 as an emergency measure. Second. It has been moved and seconded for passage of ordinance number 11-2021 as an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries and ordinance number 11, 2021 is approved and enacted as an emergency measure. Moving on to agenda item 10. This has, this is ordered legislation, I believe, to amend the off street parking in the codified ordinances to require bicycle parking. Um, any changes to the zoning code like this must be referred to the Planning Commission for their review and recommendation. Um, the Zoning Committee comfortable with what's what's in the agenda tonight, Mr. Hainem? Um, I haven't talked to the Zoning Committee, um, uh, but we I think we can refer this to the Planning Commission, and um, we can re and. We will have time to consider it at another meeting. Katie, do you have a specific comment? I have a question. So just for clarification, so if there are less than 20 cars parking spots, does that mean they're not required to have bicycle parking? I know I looked at Toledo's and I know ours is very similar, but it just occurred to me that, is that what that says? I would or think it I'm would missing? require them to have one. Uh, Leslie, uh, what's my lawyer say? That's my interpretation, Mr. Hainem and Ms. Mrs. Capolini. I think um, anything less than 20, you have to have at least one. And we can, I can clarify that in the language too, so that there is no question about that. This is actually modeled after uh, Cleveland's legislation. Okay. It looks pretty similar to what Toledo has too. Yes, exactly. Exactly. All right. I can, I can tell you from a, from a plan review standpoint, um, anything up to 20 spaces, we would require one. Once they had more than 20, then we would get required to. That, that's how we would read it. So. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yep. How do we, there's a time for compliance. How do we enforce that? Is that something that would be actively enforced or is this something that if there's um, a question about, then we can go to that and say, hey, it's been two years since this was enacted. You need to add this in. I'm, I'm curious about B. It's not going to be retroactive, I don't believe. This is going to be for new construction. Mark, you're shaking your head. Is that, am I wrong on that? I, I, I glanced through it, Mayor, and it looked to me like uh, there was a, that uh, we give people two years to put them in. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the things I was going to bring up in a committee meeting. It's a that's a little that's very unusual. Yeah. Well, it's similar to what we did with the sign code. Right. right. If you think about it, <clears throat> Leslie and I talked about this. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, and we have an issue with putting a time time deadline on it. I'm just not sure two years is the right number. I think the sign was a lot longer than that. But yeah, the sign code was twenty. Yeah. Obviously, a much larger <laughs> expenditure though, too. Bingo. And, and it's, uh, and there's a need now. Um, and this, and, 
Mr. Mayor, this is something that, uh, you know, you might want to address in your planning commission uh, and see what the planning commission thinks about. Um, I thought this was reasonable uh, and I was trying to accommodate what I thought was a really a clear and present need now. Um, I want to give people some time. It's, uh, and it's not a big expenditure. So, um, uh, Leslie, Leslie added this in and I wholeheartedly, uh, support that. Yeah. In, in, in preparation for the zoning committee meeting, it would be helpful, although I'm not on the committee or at least me to understand, um, for the larger parking lots, like the schools and uh, and other places, what this would entail as far as how many, how much space would it take? Because I do know that some of the parking lot, it's, uh, I imagine the schools already have bike racks. I just don't know if they meet the, the, the current code. And then for stuff downtown where parking can get tight from time to time, particularly on, uh, on Monday nights when, when uh, Patrick's going inside the five for, for his, uh, for his trivia night, um, that, that that takes up a reasonably significant amount of space uh, if it, if they're two foot by six foot each. Or maybe a clarification of what current spots could be a part of that. If there's like a, a grayed out zone or a lined out area, if it's of a certain size, if that would be acceptable, if there's maybe some sort of protection added to it, I, maybe some clarification on what acceptable zones would be. Um, right. This. This is not just requiring the two foot by six foot space. This is also requiring the installation of a bicycle rack or anchor. That is an expenditure by a lot of different people. It is. It's a, it's a definite commitment to, um, to accommodating bikes in a greater way than we have historically. I don't know if there's a way to work this in or, if it even makes sense, but say you have three businesses, three small businesses close together, and maybe they come together and put in one rack for the three businesses. Like maybe that's too complicated to include, but I'm sure you'll work with people so that each small business wouldn't have just one rack. I mean, it'd be more cost effective too, I'm sure too. Kind well, if you think, have if that you, kind of sharing. If you think about it, I mean, our downtown folks don't operate parking lots. You know, it's uh, so the the issue is, um, you know, I mean, it's going to impact a McDonald's. Well, on, like Saxon Square, like a yeah. strip mall. It's going to impact that. But that's a, that's a single operating unit. The way it's written, it's going to affect my office building. I'm going to have it to will. put two bicycle parking spaces in it. And I believe I have some space. They're going to be up on the sidewalk, and they are going to be closer to the building than the handicap spaces. But when you think about it, that's a lot of businesses you're impacting, saying you got to do this in two years. Back to Lindsay's question: What is the enforcement of this? Are we going to enforce it on everybody? We're we going to send a letter to every building owner in town. Well, you know, generally we deal, and you know this uh, better than I do, but the way we enforce our zoning code is uh based on complaint if yeah, we don't have a, if, if we don't get a complaint we don't we don't enforce but you know a requirement like this i think it would make you know it might make sense and uh, mr mayor you know you're the you're the executive on this but it might very well make sense to send a letter to uh property owners business owners and let them know that this requirement is coming and uh and if and of course, the planning commission has the option to suggest a different time frame as well, if they think two years is too short. Frankly, you know, I, I think uh, yeah, it's the kind of thing that um, that promotes uh, the walkability and the uh, and the and the individual. I mean, the, the individual availability to these businesses by. Bikers as a uh, the bike rider, I, and Craig, I know you're a bike rider too. You know these are 
It's not, it'd be nice. It's nice. Not it's a, a good idea to have a place to put your bike. Not a big issue for me, but there's a lot of parking spaces at Dave White Chevrolet. He's going to get up to the 24 maximum. He's going to have some words for me over that. I can guarantee it because he doesn't sell bikes. He sells cars. Well, I don't know that those are parking spaces. You're talking about where he puts all his, those are, are those inventory are vehicle spots? storage spaces. Maybe they right. don't buy. I don't know. He's got a few parking spots right in front of his, right in front of his, uh, right around his showroom. But I wouldn't think the places where he puts his uh, inventory would qualify as parking spaces. I would wonder if we might want to extend the deadline a little bit, because we all know there's a lot of businesses that are suffering right now. And to have to apply additional expenses at this time or even over the next two years might be a bit quick just considering a lot of industries might take a little while to recover. Um, but that's something that the committee um, or the planning commission could discuss a little more. I know it's not a huge expense, but asking anything extra seems a, a tough. I was not planning to refer this to committee, but rather to refer this to the planning commission for their review and recommendation. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I'd be... I'm always interested in what our dedicated professionals on the planning commission uh, think about the zoning legislation that I make Leslie put together for me. <laughs> so All right. that sounds like a plan, Mr. Hainham. Let's let's send it there. And in the meantime, the administration can talk about timing and enforcement of it. Um, I don't think it's going to be that terrible if we're not going to go after everybody. And it's indeed complaint driven. But it's a we're going to hire another person if we're going to ex go out and do an inspection of every. Business. I would not. I would not expect that. Yeah, that's not what I'm anticipating. What the punish? What's what's the fine or whatever, Leslie? If they don't do it, retroactive is is different. It's written like it's a new requirement. Well, Kevin won't approve your approve your site plan if you don't do it. But if you're going out there and retro requiring it what's your what's the what's the penalty sorry it took a minute for me to unmute um the penalty is just the similar to any other zoning code violation um so it could potentially be a misdemeanor but again you know we as with anything else we try to just seek compliance rather than really especially with our business community who we understand they have their own issues and we gotta we have to think that through when yeah. the united states enacted the ada regulations there were people going out into communities requiring all kinds of ada regulations rather in buildings mm -hmm. they're still doing it or on sites and they would force the enforcement of something like this we don't want that to happen we don't want a marauder coming in and telling no. us how to do it no this is um I, I don't anticipate that happening with um, with this legislation. I did a quick search and um, reached out to the Toledo Law Department. They haven't had any um, major, any issues with, uh, they've had complaints about not about wanting more bike spaces, but not complaints necessarily about um, um, people in trying to enforce it on businesses that don't have them. Okay. Mr. Mayor, one of the great things about um, local ordinances is we have local uh, enforcement discretion, and there is there is no um, there's there's nothing under the ADA. There's there's a citizen suit provision that empowers citizens to come in and sue for enforcement. We don't have anything like that in our zoning code. Our zoning code enforcement is entirely. Uh, driven by uh, by our city administration. So as long as, uh, and, and I know you're reasonable, so we will not have a problem with our businesses. Okay. Well, Maybe I, we recommend, can... I recommend referring it and we'll study it for a little while. This All is right, Mr. Mayor, I would move that we refer uh, ordinance number 12-2021 uh, to the Planning Commission for its review and recommendation.
Mrs. Capolini, do you have a comment before we proceed? I had a short comment, but it's it's not really crucial right now. I was just thinking about maybe the CIC, the way they offer local grants for community organizations. Maybe they could have a grant program for bicycle racks. They would be like small grants. Bicycle racks aren't really that expensive, but it might be something they could help with local businesses needing bike racks. Okay. Been moved and seconded to refer this proposed um, ordinance number 12, 2021, amending the off street bike parking to the plan commission for their review and comment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and we'll get it on the plan commission's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, agenda item 11, which is proposed ordinance 13, 2021. This is to put in place the changes to the police forcing requirements and compensation plan to move from a dispatching center to a record center. Kevin or Chief, you wanna make some comments on this? Again, this council is aware of this and has been discussed. It might be moving faster than we can control. Chief, Chief Schnorr is going to talk about this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as, as you had said, this really is as far as personnel goes and, and planning for the personnel that will uh, be with us moving forward. This basically lays out a roadmap for the staffing that the uh, police department will have once the consolidation occurs later this year. The exact timeline for the entire county is, is still um, um, being worked on. However, um, for our purposes, uh, Sylvania's uh, dispatch center being uh, one of the smaller ones in Lucas County and the fact that some of our staff have already taken positions on, with other jurisdictions, you know, there's a chance that we could, um, one, work with, with Sylvania Township um, until, until the final uh, consolidation occurs or we, our, our PSAP could be consolidated, you know, a bit sooner on the timeline. So in either, in either case, uh, we, well, we have our manpower uh, plan for the police department pretty much worked out in the new positions identified. And just briefly, either you or Kevin, state what we're doing. We're creating three positions. One of you ought to say that. Correct, correct. So we went, we initially, uh, as of right now, we had um, uh, six dispatch positions uh, um, in the, within the police department for dispatch operations. Uh, that will be after consolidation. Uh, those uh, positions will be, uh, three of those positions will be converted to clerk positions. Those clerks will take over uh, many of the duties that the dispatchers uh, had assigned outside of dispatch work, such as records, um, and uh, operating the, uh, the window for the public um, to, uh, to, to uh, access the police department during the workday. Um, in addition to those uh, duties, they will also take over the property room and many of the uh, non-sworn activities that are done by sergeants uh, or other sworn staff throughout the police department, um, you know, running the safety city or the registration process and uh, setting up the classes for Safety City is a perfect example. Right now, sworn staff do that. Um, all those types of, of uh, duties and responsibilities will be taken over by our, our clerk uh, positions uh, in the future. Any questions for Chief Snow? So Chief, in the event in the future that the need arises by population growth, by whatever, that we would need to expand the personnel or hours of operation, we would be able to do that? That, that was discussed uh, previously in, in some of our meetings, uh, both uh, uh, within, within the administration and, and uh, at, at the, uh, an earlier council meeting. And it is something that we're keeping an eye on. Uh, some of these details and, and duties, it's, it's really um, um, a little bit unclear on how much time it will really take because um, we had, you know, let's say three or four staff members within the police department that have, do, that have done these jobs. 
Um, and the, 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 the biggest X factor probably for us is the, uh, uh, the body cams and uh, the, the number of cameras that we'll have in the field and, re and public re requests for that video. That vi much of that video has to be redacted. Um, so that is a new arena for us. The feedback we're getting from other agencies is that can be very time consuming and it has to be right. Once those videos go out, uh, many times they're stored on YouTube. So you can't have a video that, that has improperly redacted information uh, contained within. So uh, definitely something that we're going to have to look at if additional staffing is, is required, it, it's something that we can revisit, revisit in the future. We think initially, though, this is a good plan for the, uh, um, for the duties that we're, that we're challenged with. Thank you. And we'd like to get this done to make sure that the employees that we do want to keep know they have a position to move into as our dispatch center gets smaller. We, we are, we're losing, I assume chief, we're losing two of our dispatchers to Perrysburg. Is that still the case? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a possibility. Uh, I spoke with the Perrysburg chief recently. Uh, they are conducting interviews. No final decisions have been made, but two of our dispatchers are currently in a process for two open positions uh, in the city of Perrysburg. All right. We do have ordinance 13, 2021 to make these changes in our codified ordinances. Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce by title only ordinance number 13, 2021, amending section 125.02, division of police, amending section 139.02A, content and coverage of compensation plan, amending section 139.03D, special compensation provisions for the codified ordinances of Sylvania 1979 as amended. And I move passage of ordinance number 13-2021 as an emergency measure. Second. It has been moved and seconded for passage of ordinance number 13-2021 as an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and ordinance number 13, 2021 is enacted as an emergency measure. Thank you. Moving on to the second page of our agenda, we're up to agenda item 12. Um, we have President Fry's changes to the committee structure. Um, I believe, Mr. Fry, the only change you did was cha exchange committee chairmanships with Mrs. Westfall. No other committee assignments were changed. That's correct. Because council approved these last January, I felt it was appropriate for you to approve them as amended. So Mr. Fry, you wanna move passage? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I move that the committee assignments for the year, uh, for the year 2021, uh, be uh, be amended as as submitted in the council packet. Second. And moved and seconded to approve those amended committee assignments. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. On to agenda item thirteen. We've added agenda item thirteen to schedule a finance committee meeting uh, to dis to review. The debt policy, Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I mentioned, uh, when we were looking at, at, at this, I wanted to uh, set this up. We haven't, uh, I was chatting with Mr. Richardson and, and, and his time on council, I don't think we reviewed the debt policy and that's been uh, going on three years now. So um, just wanted to uh, try to schedule something, but I also wanted to be uh, cognizant of, of administration's ability to review the debt policy as it as it sits and make sure they have the opportunity to review it as well. So I was looking for something um, potentially the, the first week of February and um, we could potentially do it. Um, we have a meeting on the 1st of February, a council meeting on the 1st of February, we could do it prior to that, but, but Mr. Schroyer, Mr. Mayor, is that enough time for you all to review that? That works fine with me, Mark. Certainly all right with me. Okay. Um, I don't know that uh, we're going to need 
certainly not going to need any, anything more than an hour. Uh, so we, what's six fifteen look like for everybody on the first? Good. Works for me, Mark. Good for me. Uh, how about we? Good for me. How about we make it six forty-five? Because I don't think this will take more than about forty-five minutes. Six forty-five. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Mr. Fry, do you want me to send that policy oh, out just to everybody? To approve, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I think I heard you ask me a question. Hey, Mr. Uh, Fry, it's Toby. Do you want me to send that uh, policy out to everybody? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So, All right. We probably need a motion to set that finance committee meeting. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to set the finance committee meeting for February the 1st at 6.45 p.m. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and we'll have the clerk post that finance committee meeting date and time. Any other committee reports to be made at this time? or any committee referrals. Hearing none, um, I request a motion and a second to go into committee of the whole executive session for an update on litigation. I'll make a motion, uh, Mr. Mayor, to move into executive session for the purposes of uh, of discussing potential litigation. Second. Been moved and seconded. I need the clerk to call the roll.
Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. McCann? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Ms. Stowe? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Hainum? Yes. Mr. Hainum, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the vote is seven, unanimous seven, to leave executive committee, executive session to return to open council. Um, Bill, you need to see if there's anybody wants to get back in and give Chuck a chance to open up the YouTube channel again. It's open. Okay, he's very efficient. <laughs> no one's here. All right. Um, council is now returning from its executive session to discuss pending litigation. I can report that only pending litigation was discussed during the executive session. No action was taken during the executive session, and there is no action to be taken at this time as a result of the executive session. That brings us to the end of our scheduled agenda for tonight. Um, there are There's information items, the December 2020 end of year bank reconciliations and reports of the January 13th Board of Architecture Review and Plan Commission meeting minutes. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries in this kind. <laughs> Looks like we got done just from in tonight time. on Monday, February yeah. the 1st at 7.30 p.m. Thank you Thanks. all. Thanks, everybody. Bye, uh, Stay healthy. Okay.